This is my Topo Toppers Mesa camper on my Nissan Frontier. It's a wedge style pop-up camper that was installed in March 2023. I'm gradually building out the interior and sharing my progress as I go. So I'm ready to start building this piece, putting it together and you know, just like this, I don't have 100% clear vision of, of how this is gonna go together exactly what's gonna be where. I need to start building, it's really the only way I can do it. I gotta start building it up and then piecing it together. Because this thing is gonna be taller and it's gonna have some heavy stuff, including water, which I wanna kinda of have up here. And I've got this Utilitrack rail that runs in the bed of the truck here that works very well with the Unistrut components. My idea is to build sort of a underlying structure using Unistrut um, that I think will give it some strength and then I will I think sheath it with plywood and then build drawers or cabinets or I don't know exactly <laughs> I just have to start working on it. I have tons of Unistrut components and pieces of Unistrut rail that I've accumulated over the years from multiple projects. So it makes sense to me to build with the stuff that I already have rather than going and buying new material which I don't even sure what I would buy anyway. So that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. So the idea here is that these 90 degree brackets will support vertical pieces of Unistrut and will attach plywood to the face of that. Well, so far, virtually everything I've managed to build out in here has been stuff that I had in the garage, stuff I've repurposed. I've had to buy a little bit of hardware, but mostly all the wood, um, even this aluminum trim, stuff that I had, and I'm reusing a bunch of Unistrut in order to build the structure on this other side. So now I'm really kind of motivated to see just how far I can get without buying any more materials. Thanks, really. This used to be a little table that I made that was part of a previous build. I would pull it out and set one end on the bumper, and then these legs folded out. And just the right length and just wide enough and it's even got some finish on it you can just use a little bit of uh, refinishing on the top and I think we're set there so when I made this table this piece of plywood was something that I salvaged from something else I think it was just sitting around the house I have no idea what it was before and uh, it's gonna be going into it at least its third maybe fourth use I'm ready to start cutting and fitting my Unistrut structure. You can see how this kind of came together. There's my little countertop and all of the Unistrut support going to the Utilitrack rails. And this is bolted to the underside of this rail that supports the bed panels. And I placed these bolts to make sure that when the bed panels are in place, they wouldn't be hitting those bolts. And to secure this onto the Unistrut supports, I wanted to actually have bolts pass all the way through rather than just, you know, putting screws up partway into the wood because this is gonna be part of the strength is this piece. Fortunately, I had some carriage bolts and so that allowed me to bring those through without having, you know, a big knobby square bolt sitting on top. So those bump up just a tiny little bit, but they're smooth. And this thing feels super, super solid. I feel really good about that. So this I feel like was the easy part. And now the much more complicated part is going to be figuring out all of this. I do not know how this is gonna to come together, but this is how I have to figure out. I have to just build and then start putting stuff in to see. So I did end up finally needing to buy an actual new piece of wood. I just did not have any scrap that was big enough to cover this entire thing. I did feel like it was gonna be 
easier to pull this together if this was one piece of wood that I can cut my various doors out of. To make it reasonably easy to transport, I bought a four foot by four foot piece at the hardware store. It's just a tiny, tiny bit shy here. I was hoping to sort of cut this in and tuck it around under that corner, but for that little detail, it was not worth buying an entire four bay sheet and cutting it out in the parking lot. So I got to figure out how I'm going to anchor this to the framework. And I've got my little sketch of how this is going to go together. And I have to be honest, I don't know whether it makes more sense to try and build the interior components of this and then cut this to match, or if I should cut my openings and then build the interior up to those openings. I really, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, after staring at this for a few more minutes, what I realized is I have to build some of this interior stuff first because it's dictated by this uh, underlying support framework that I've built in. This is gonna support uh, the water jugs and that's going to dictate where the opening for the interior water jug is gonna be. And then this water jug is gonna dictate where the kitchen cabinetry is gonna be, which is gonna you know, decide or limit what is gonna be accessible from there. So I do need to get this interior part figured out. Uh, it's funny, yesterday when I was looking at this and I just, I couldn't quite visualize those pieces coming together. And so I went to get this, but now that I've got this just sitting here, suddenly I can, I can much more clearly visualize what needs to happen next. This piece at least is something that I got free off of Craigslist. And I am using three quarter inch for just this piece right here because uh, the two water jugs are gonna be sitting on this and I do have a piece of Unistrut going across there and there's quite a bit of support here, but I wanted to give this as much strength as possible. Again, I'm just piecing this together as I go, as each subsequent step depends on how the previous step turned out. I'm using the nailer to more quickly and easily tack things together and make sure it's all functional before I secure everything with screws. I'm creating a more form-fitting receptacle for what will be my exterior access water jug, and I'm just plunge cutting this opening. This can be a dangerous technique, so be sure to watch some how-to videos before attempting plunge cuts with a circular saw. I'm using the jigsaw to more precisely finish the corners I couldn't cut all the way into with the circular saw. Now I'm working on the end cap of the cabinet, which needs a few notches and angles to fit properly. I have just one more of these 90 degree unistrut brackets. So I am going to use it to help secure this piece. I could use a few more 90 degree brackets here and there. So I'm making some out of a scrap of perforated angle steel that dates back to the very first super basic Forester build. This encloses the interior water section and then uh, there will be the drawer up here. Let's take a look from the inside. So there's the compartment for the interior water. And that will have a door on it. This will just be covered. And then up here, I need to make a drawer. All right, so here's the little cubby unit ready to go in. I had to cut a few notches and things in a few places to accommodate little bits and pieces of the construction in here. I'm creating the corner radius of the cabinet doors and drawers just by tracing a small canister that was about the right size. So what's making this even more complicated is I'm mapping this out sort of 
it's mirror image of how it will look once you're inside the truck because I had to basically mark the back side of this when it was inside. I had to mark it through the cargo door to figure out where my locations are and then mapped out my openings from there. With as much of the straight cutting done as I was able, I'm now ready to go back and finish up the corners with the jigsaw. Now what I found when I was building that is that with a regular jigsaw blade, I could not turn this corner. So I ended up going and getting these um, much skinnier blades. You can see that they're quite a bit thinner so they can turn better. It also wasn't perfect, uh, but it was better than trying to do it with this. The main problem with this technique is that the jigsaw doesn't make as thick of a cut as the circular saw, but I'm not building fine furniture here, and I'll clean these up with some sandpaper. So I just installed the awning yesterday, and uh, already just working on this camper build project that I've been working on, I've had to stop in the middle of the day every single day because it just gets too hot in the sun. I have to wait for the sun to get from one set of shade to another set of shade. And I've been able to just work straight through the day. Uh, having this awning is making it much more cooler and comfortable to work here. And these routed corners don't serve any functional purpose other than looks. Uh, when I was sort of researching ideas months and months ago on how I wanted to build this out, uh, there was one van build I saw where they had just used rounded corners and flush fitting cabinet doors and drawer faces. I really liked the look. I thought it was clean, but gave it a little bit more of a polished look. Well, this is the moment of truth. I spent so much time trying to get this all figured out. I hope I got it right. I've never really built drawers before. <laughs> and I'm going to do a very basic job of it and hopefully it's going to work. One of the bottom drawers runs into the wheel well in the truck bed and I don't want to sacrifice any usable space by just making a short drawer. So I'm attempting to build a drawer that kind of wraps over it. Okay, well, it is not a thing of beauty, but no one but me has to look at it. It's gonna work. All of the drawers are built. This one, as you can see, is made out of some scrap that was the top of my little built-in cabinet when I had the Lear Topper on there. And what I've been doing is testing if a little hole like this would work as a pull because I didn't want to have any hardware sticking out here. Just kind of like what I did with these. And I've added a magnet catch. You can see there's the metal plate. I found a bunch of these um, magnet poles at the reuse recycle center. These have actually obviously never been used. They were 50 cents each, that was a great deal. They felt pretty strong when I tested them, so I decided to see if I could make these work. And I'm just testing to make sure this works before I do it to everything else. Looking pretty good. We'll have to see if that's strong enough to keep them in. To drill this hole for the pull, I'm using a one inch spade bit. This is a little rough through the plywood, but I don't have anything else I don't want to buy yet more hardware for this. I just have to do a little sanding to clean those holes up. These holes were pretty rough, but I spent some time sanding them and they eventually cleaned up nicer than I expected. 
I'm pre-fitting the hardware so I can correct any errors and don't scuff up the finished paint. I'll be taking the hardware back off before painting. Finally, everything is done and ready for paint. I'm going to start off with a coat of primer. Primer is dry and it's time for the first coat of paint. Tomorrow I'll do a second coat and then I'll let that sit and cure for a day or two before I start handling everything for the final install. I'm just sliding all these drawers into place to make sure I've got this piece in exactly the right position. I've marked where I need bolt holes to secure the cabinet face to the Unistrut structure. If you're familiar with Unistrut, yes, this is sort of a backwards use of the captive nuts, but this works just fine for what I'm doing. Okay, so the clock has been ticking on my departure for Colorado, so I kind of went into express mode on finishing up the cabinet. It's not 100% done, but it's done enough for this trip. Let me show you where I'm at. So this is all basically completely installed. All the drawers, cabinet faces, everything is in and as you can maybe see I've got a little bit of alignment issues with the drawers that's something I'm gonna have to you know fiddle with in the future but they all work so that's fine I got this stuff all mounted here as I plan my fire extinguisher uh, new really complete first aid kit got my paper towels here my five gallon bucket now has tie downs I finished out this corner where the plywood sort of comes together and that unistrut was sort of visible in there got that finished out with this aluminum trim my plan is to finish out this countertop with aluminum trim like I did on the uh, bench there. I'm just out of time on that, but this is functional. This is fine. There is actually finish on this edge of wood, and so it's not too, too raw. It just doesn't look fantastic. All well, the storage in here has worked out as expected. I've got 10 days worth of clothing in these cubbies and in these drawers including some sort of warmer outerwear if I need it. This little unit down here, I didn't want to put a drawer here because I'm probably going to build something for a heater into this space and this was not going to work, but I didn't want to not use this space in here. And so I, I made this little access so that I can just stuff dirty clothes in there and then, you know, when I get home, I can pull them all out. Actually, I can pull this drawer out and easily get everything out of there. So it just gives me a fast, easy place to stuff my dirty clothes and not have them in with my clean clothes. Over here, this is not as complete as I'd hoped, but it's going to have to do for this trip. Obviously, the kitchen cabinet here needs, you know, shelves, cubbies, pouches, something built in to take advantage of all this space and so that I can, you know, also use this for dry goods storage. There's plenty of room in here. Uh, for now, I've just got my stuff rattling around in the bottom and I'm going to carry my dry goods for this trip in a, in a box in the truck. So this is still under construction here. The water, of course, is looking good and functional. So one of the things I forgot to mention when I was building this is that the drawers have no hardware. There's not slide hardware. It's just a wooden box that slides into place. And what I've got on the bottom here is I just built some basic platforms out of scraps of wood that I have and added these runners of one by twos to sort of keep things in place. Now, it's not fine furniture, but again, I don't live in this. It's just for camping. Uh, these drawers get opened a couple of times a day at most when I'm camping. I looked around at the drawers in my house, the cabinetry, the furniture. Uh, they're all just wood on wood. None of them have actual, you know, slider hardware. I did look at a number of different drawer slide options, but ultimately it was going to be extra complicated to build in enough 
you know, framework around the drawers just to mount the hardware that it just, it was going to be extra complicated, uh, more wood material possible that I didn't even have and adding more weight that I didn't really need. These work fine. I've put wax on all of the wood parts that rub against each other. They work fine. So I have now used the camper with this setup in place for the Colorado trip. That was a 10 day trip. And I've used it again on a two night trip up in the mountains of Washington. This has worked out fantastically. My Topo Topper's Mesa built out like this is by far the best way I've ever camped. I love it. I feel like even when I've been out for a week, week and a half, uh, as long as I can restock the supplies, I feel comfortable just going and going and going. So really uh, excited about this and I appreciate you following along. If you have any questions about anything I showed you in this video, just post them in the comments below. I will try to get to all of your questions. Thank you for watching.